Today is the start of a new series. Originally, I was going to talk about how to be a Catholic YouTuber, but I decided not to do that in favor of doing an entire series on entrepreneurship. Specifically, chronically, and going over my journey of entrepreneurship, what I've been doing, what's been successful, what I've learned. And today, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of what it means to be an entrepreneur. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. New episodes out every day. And that's probably the hardest part about being an entrepreneur right there. The constant grind. See, I love the grind. I adore the grind. And it's something that a lot of people don't understand is I love realizing that I have like 30 million things to do and not even knocking them out, but just looking ahead and seeing like, oh, I got so many things to do. And yeah, I get stressed out when I have a laundry list of items that desperately, desperately need my attention, but I really enjoy it. That's probably the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur in general is the fact that like you have so much work that is on your shoulders that you can't shirk off. Like there are methods and there are ways to be an entrepreneur and there are so many things online that you can look up and things that you have to teach yourself. If you're not being successful with it, it either means it's a problem with your plan or with your execution. And it's almost like a puzzle of trying to figure out what's the, what's the secret sauce to understanding how do I get my product or my, my service into the market where people want to buy it. Like at the end of the day, Hey, the end goal of an entrepreneur is having someone come up to you and say, hey, I want to buy your product without you having to have done any work. Granted, that goal is going to take a long time to accomplish, but when you get there, it's it's money in the bank. It's incredible. But let's compile all this and do a list. I'm going to talk about the five things I love and hate most about being an entrepreneur. Number one, obviously, the most hate is the stress. There is a lot of stress having to go upon your shoulders and no one else's when you're an entrepreneur. Like if you screw something up or something you need to get done and you have to have done it, you can't pass the buck to anyone else. It's no longer your teacher's fault. It's no longer your parents' fault. It's no longer your friend's fault. Like you have to do it yourself. You have to get it done. And yeah, sometimes life will throw weird stuff at you, but if you have something that you know has to get done, you have to do it. That means me to number two, which is a good thing, learning about accountability and personal management. One of my favorite business gurus, you could say, is Gary Vaynerchuk. I adore everything he's ever written. I agree with almost every single one of his points, especially when it comes to marketing and branding. But his whole thing is sometimes you have to like take a sacrifice to get where you want to go. Like would it have been smart for me after leaving college to go home and with the job money that I had had working, be able to save all of that while living in my parents' house and be able to invest that back into my business? Yeah, that would have been smart. But to some degree, I also knew that I had to stay in California to do a lot of the work I wanted to do. So that means that a lot of personal accountability about like I have to pay rent, I have to get food money, I have to, all this stuff that is really important and necessary starts falling right on your shoulders. And if you don't get it, you're you're out of luck. Like holding a job and then keeping the entrepreneurship life going is super, super difficult. Be being able to learn that time management sooner rather than later is really important. The third lesson I've learned as an entrepreneur is that you kind of have to sit back and realize that you sometimes can't do everything. This may sound hypocritical because I just said you have to be able to try to take everything on your shoulders, but that means like the weight of everything success or fail, but that doesn't mean you have to do everything. Sometimes delegation is the way to go. Like with my t-shirt company, I can't design worth a dang, so I got one of my friends to design all the shirts for me. And the logo and our promotional material. She does all the designing because I don't know how to. Could I learn? Yeah. Would I be as good as her? Probably not. So that's number three, which leads directly into the fourth lesson, which is humility. You need to know your strengths and your weaknesses specifically. Like stress is huge, but sometimes you have to realize like, hey, you did well. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Taking pride in your accomplishments isn't a bad thing. It's amazing to take pride in something that you've done. Especially like if you just sold your hundredth shirt or you sold your first shirt. That's it. Take pride in your accomplishments. You're putting in so much work for an end goal. Sometimes you'll need to realize that your end goal, while it may not have been achieved yet, the steps being reached to get to that end goal is really where the key is at. Every single milestone is a huge deal. So remembering that sometimes the small things are awesome victories and that you sometimes did something incredible and that sometimes you messed up. When you are at fault, take fault. When you are doing something good, take the praise. Don't just say, oh, it's nothing. No, when you do something good, 
Be proud of yourself for it. There's nothing wrong with that. And when you screwed up, admit it. Own up to your mistakes. So that's the fourth lesson. And the fifth lesson would be complete and utter reliance on God. I'm not even honestly at a huge point in my life right now. Like I haven't gotten anywhere where I'm even close to being in my potential where I know God wants me to be. But I know without prayer, I wouldn't even be close. The fact that I'm running a youth ministry company, a t-shirt company, um, working on the side and having the YouTube channel, there is a lot going on. Without daily prayer, without daily prayer, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. Without constant of like, God, you got me and people around me to remind me of that, I would not have even gotten close this far. Personally, I pray a Divine Mercy Chaplet every day because I know that without God's mercy, I'm, I'm, everything's over. And then I wake up and thank God every day that I have the ability to do what I'm doing and it's incredible. So those are probably the five lessons I've learned from being an entrepreneur. I'm not a successful entrepreneur yet, but we're gonna see how that goes. And I kinda wanna do this as a new series about just talking about what does it mean to be an entrepreneur, what are my specific steps, what goes on into being an entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you guys have any questions about what the entrepreneurship life, what it's like to be an entrepreneur, um, how do I deal with stress, how do I manage, leave it in the comments below or message me on Instagram, I'll reply immediately. The entrepreneurship life is really hard. But at the end of the day, the question is, where is God placing you? And if God is calling you to be an entrepreneur, you got to do it. Also, I want to shout out another small company, which is Kindred Force. They make these incredibly super dope um, bracelets that are made from some sort of cord. This one's made of paracord, but they all have metals. I'm going to zoom in on this. Hold up. They have metals of saints on them made of wood. They're a brand new company run by Jill Simmons, who's also part of Pink Salt Riot. I totally love this bracelet. I've been wearing it. It has a super dope clasp on it. Their company launches on July 24th, so I totally recommend going to kindredforest.co. Link in the description. Check it out. They're awesome. I mean, it's straight up just wooden Saint metals. They have them as bracelets. They have them as necklaces. I would love to get a few, like, for me and Rachel for, like, anklets really engage that California life. Also on Instagram today until their launch on the 24th, they're going to be having giveaways on Instagram. So make sure you go follow them at Kindred Forest Co on Instagram. And if you get the same medal on the 24th, you're going to have some more awesome stuff. So make sure you check them out. They're super cool. I've been wearing mine. It's awesome. I'm probably going to order another one as an anklet. Like I said, they're super cool. Another awesome startup company. So go check out Kindred Forest Co. Make sure you subscribe down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out more of my videos in the sidebar or at my channel. And thank you everybody so much for watching. Let's wrap this up. Remember, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Rise up and live.